Sir Isaac Newton's Family Isaac Newton, in full Sir Isaac Newton, was born on December 25, 1642, in Wolsthorpe, Lincolnshire, England. Isaac Newton was born to a widowed mother. His father died three months prior and was not expected to survive, as he was tiny and weak. Shortly after, Newton was sent by his stepfather, the well-known minister, Barnabas Smith, to live with his grandmother and was separated from his mother until Smith's death in 1653. Newton lived in an extended family consisting of his mother, his grandmother, one half-brother, and two half-sisters. Sir Isaac Newton was three years old when his mother, Hannah, remarried and moved away to live with her new husband, Barnabas Smith, who is rector of the church at North Witham, only a mile and a half away. Newton was left behind at Wellsthorpe to be raised by his maternal grandparents, and in the end, his mother did not want to raise Isaac up. Sir Isaac Newton's Education Newton was enrolled at the King's School in Grantham, a school in Lincolnshire, where he lodged with a local apothecary and was introduced to the fascinating world of chemistry. His mother pulled him out of school at age 12. Her plan was to make him a farmer and have him tend the farm. He attended free grammar school. Though Newton did not excel in school, he earned the opportunity to attend Trinity College Cambridge, where he wanted to study law. His mother refused to pay for his education, so while at college, he worked as a servant to pay his way. He spent much of his time on independent pursuits and did very poorly in school. He was removed from school and by October 1659, he was found to be at most learned by Paul Stewart, his mother, widowed by now for a second time, attempted to make a farmer of him. He hated farming. Newton invented a scientific method, and as stated in the name, it says it all. He presented his methodology. A set of four rules for scientific reasoning were stated, the Principia, and proposed that 1. We are to admit no more causes and natural things, such as they are both true, sufficient to explain their appearances. 2. The same natural effects must be assigned to the same causes. 3. Qualities of bodies are to be assumed as universal. And 4. Prepositions deduced from observation of phenomena should be viewed as accurate until other phenomena contradict them. Newton was curious. He had questions and he loved finding answers, but he had to learn stuff to get answers, either learning answers or learning other stuff to answer the question on his own, and he would not give up before getting a satisfactory answer for himself. After getting his bachelor's degree in 1665, he studied math, physics, optics, and astronomy on his own. Cambridge was closed for a couple of years due to the plague known as the Black Death. By 1666, he had completed his early work on his three laws of motion, and later on, he got his master's degree. He had a meticulous and systematic approach to organizing and categorizing information, knowledge, experiments, and ideas. Blending the curiosity and exploration of science and solitude, Newton practiced the ideal combination for ideation and innovation, exploration, incubation, and reflection. While he's best known for his work on gravity, Newton was a tinkerer as well, but more so with ideas than physical inventions. He would invent reflecting lenses for telescopes, which produce clear images in a smaller telescope compared to the refracting models of the time. Sir Isaac Newton contributed significantly to the field of science over his lifetime. He invented calculus and provided a clear understanding of optics. But his most significant work had to do with forces, specifically with the development of the universal law of gravity. Sir Isaac Newton's Obstacles Newton suffered speech impediments, and it caused him to stutter, but of course, it never stopped him from achieving greatness. He was also a very reserved person, as for when he was a member of parliament, he never spoke, except for one time when he asked an aide to close a window on the premises. He spent most of his time alone, and he built miniature mills, machines, carts, and other inventions. He was high strung egotistical, and dominant, and he experienced attacks of rage, which he often directed towards his friends and family, and he would later recall that he would threaten his father and mother to burn them and the house over them. He had no father, but had a mother who didn't want him, and it caused trauma and depression. Newton faced many challenges in his life. One of them was that he suffered from two nervous breakdowns, and during those breakdowns, he went to bed but did not get any sleep for five nights, and he thought that his friends were plotting against him. Also, he plotted against Gottfried Leibniz, who he believed stole calculus from him. As he got older, he had hard times concentrating and often got sidetracked. In 1679, his mother died. His reaction to his mother's death was being in solitude for long periods of time. He was prone to depression and often had bitter disputes, usually with other scientists. 
some of these were disputes lasted for decades. He was always concerned about what other people thought about his beliefs and ideas. He was arrogant and always thought he was right. He worried that others would not believe him. Although he had a rough start, he persevered and kept going despite the challenges. Newton's day, mathematics, and physics were fringe topics compared to now. They were generally not taught in school at all, and schools would instead focus on teaching religion and languages. Although Newton was scientifically inclined from a young age, a good mathematical education would not have been available to him until he went to college. During the period 1692 to 1693, Newton was known to have suffered a breakdown of nervous functioning or a supposed depression lasting for 18 months, as reported by Hughes. He suffered insomnia and poor digestion in his letters to friends, showing signs of irrationality, and also showing signs of autism. He had fierce rivalries. When it came to his intellectual rivals, Newton could be jealous and vindictive. Among those with whom he feuded with was German mathematician and philosopher Gottfried Leibniz, and the two men had a bitter battle over who invented calculus. Sir Isaac Newton's works. Isaac Newton is widely known for his published work Philosophia Naturalis Principia Mathematica, 1687. It's commonly known as the Principia. His laws of motion first appeared in this work, and it is one of the most important single works in the history of modern science. Isaac Newton changed the way we understand the universe. Revered in his own lifetime, he discovered the laws of gravity and motion and invented calculus, and he helped to shape our rational worldview. Some things that he helped invent and discover was the reflecting telescope, he discovered calculus, he developed three laws of motion, he proposed new theories of light and color, and devised law of universal gravitation. He researched into the nature of chemical substances and processes, primarily the transmutation of materials from one type of matter to another. Newton and others conducted experiments but also incorporated philo philosophical thoughts into their attempts to un uncover the mysteries of the physical universe. Newton's alchemical practice functions as a translation code for a new language of economics in which an investigation of material spiritual value becomes transformed into a systematic structure of social value understood through economics. Sir Isaac Newton's Religion Newton also studied alchemy and religion. He wrote a forensic analysis of the Bible in an effort to decode divine prophecies. He held unorthodox religious views and rejected the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. After his death, Newton's heir, John Conduit, the husband of his half-niece, Catherine Barton, feared that one of the fathers of the Enlightenment would be revealed as an obsessive heretic. And so for hundreds of years, few people saw his work. It was only in the 1960s that some of Newton's papers were widely published. Sir Isaac Newton's interesting anecdotes and quotes. I can calculate the motion of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of people. Gravity explains the motions of the planets, but it cannot explain who sets the planets in motion. No discovery was ever made without a bold guess. Some traits worth emulating of Sir Isaac Newton was that he was a role model, and he was a big influence to others and other scientists around him, and he was incredibly hardworking. In 1727, at 84, Sir Isaac Newton died in his sleep. He was buried with much ceremony in Westminster Abbey in London, England. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz was born on July 1, 1646 in Leipzig, Saxony, which is now known as Germany. He was the son of Friedrich Leibniz, a jurist and professor of moral philosophy at the University of Leipzig, and Katharina Schmuck, the daughter of a professor of law. Unfortunately, Friedrich Leibniz died when Gottfried Leibniz was only six years old, and he was raised by his mother and uncle. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz entered education at Nikolai School in Leipzig when he was seven years old. Throughout school, he was taught Aristotle's logic, but he was not satisfied with Aristotle's system, and he began to develop his own ideas on how to improve it. He taught himself advanced Latin and even some Greek when he was 12 years old. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, amate Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. At age 14, Leibniz entered the University of Leipzig, which is a very young age, but this was the custom at the time. 
There he studied philosophy and mathematics. At the University of Leipzig, he met Jacob Tomasius, who supervised Leibniz's first philosophical treatise. After receiving his baccalaureate from the University of Leipzig, Leibniz continued his studies at the University of Altdorf. In 1672, Leibniz was sent on a diplomatic mission to Paris by the Elector of Mainz, where he met Antoine Arnold, Nicolas Malebranche, and Christian Huygens. Christian Huygens tutored Leibniz in the developments in philosophy, physics, and mathematics. There in Paris is where he achieved most of his achievements and learned everything he needed to become one of the most influential scientists in the world. Unfortunately for Leibniz, his life was not extremely easy. As mentioned earlier, Leibniz's father passed away when he was six years old, and then, when he was living his life in Paris, Leibniz's main employer died and he was forced to look for another position. He found one as a librarian for Duke Johann Friedrich of Brunswick. Then, still in Paris, Leibniz participated in the Harz project that was extremely difficult and eventually failed in 1684 due to the difficulty. But for the project, Leibniz compiled important scientific results. Then, in 1699, Leibniz and Newton were part of the calculus controversy. The controversy was between the two mathematicians concerning the discovery of calculus. Leibniz was accused of stealing Sir Isaac Newton's ideas. Newton wanted credit for calculus, so he wrote a letter to Leibniz. Some of Newton's followers accused Leibniz of plagiarism and mocked him for his wig and old-fashioned clothing when it got to court. But some of Leibniz's followers also accused Newton of stealing Leibniz's ideas because Leibniz has published his work first. Then, Leibniz was involved in another controversy regarding plagiarism in 1711 by John Cale. Leibniz even wrote to the Royal Society to request that they correct the wrongdoings of John Cale to him. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz is most well known for his development of the present-day notation for differential and integral calculus. In 1666, Leibniz published a dissertation of the art of combinations. This work sketched a plan for a universal characteristic and logical calculus. Then, in 1667, Leibniz composed a series of works in philosophical theology, called the Catholic Demonstrations, which provide a basis and justification for the reconciliation of Protestantism and Catholicism. Then, in 1672, he conceived differential calculus and started his work of infinite series. During this time, he also invented a calculating machine, which was able to perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Then, in 1679, he achieved one of his greatest achievements, which was his development of the binary system of arithmetic. And then, in 1684, he published details of his differential calculus, and 1686, he published Acta Eruditorium, which dealt with integral calculus. But this was the paper that started the dispute between him and Newton. Some interesting anecdotes and quotes from Leibniz include, It is worthy of excellent men to lose hours like slaves in the labor of calculation, which could safely be relegated to anyone else if machines were used. He had said this in 1685, when he was explaining the value of the hand-cranked calculating machine he invented in 1673. This quote demonstrates that inventors create things to make our lives much easier, and we have people like Leibniz to thank. Another quote from Leibniz is, He who hasn't tasted better things hasn't earned sweet things. This quote basically means that one cannot truly understand what it feels like to be happy if they have not experienced difficulty and sadness. I think this is valuable knowledge to know in every situation in life. We only experience difficulties so that we can truly understand what it feels like to be happy and satisfied with the things we have. Some traits to emulate from Leibniz is that he's a hardworking person. He put a lot of energy into his work and promoting scientific societies. He also worked tirelessly to achieve what he did in science and mathematics. Leibniz is also extremely brave. He was faced with a lot of plagiarism accusations, but not once did he fail to stand up for himself and his work. Finally, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz died in November 14, 1716 in Hanover. Leibniz, please don't go, please. <coughs> don't go. Before I go, the derivative of y is dy over dx. No, no, no. In today's society, Leibniz is considered to be one of the greatest and most influential scientists and thinkers in history as he has made significant contributions to philosophy, mathematics, political and social sciences, 
theology, and many more areas of education. New logic that came from the second half of the 19th century was impacted by Leibniz. Welcome to the Greek legend's life, Archimedes 287-212 BC. Archimedes was born around the estimated year 287 BCE in Syracuse on the island of Sicily. Archimedes lived for about 75 years till death came upon. He died as the Romans attacked the city which ended in around 212 or 211 BCE. One tale about Archimedes' death is that he was killed by a Roman soldier after he refused to leave his math studies. Seven. Oh, it has to be eight. Hey, you! I'm invading your city! Wait, I'm almost done. Stop working! Stop working! Stop working! Stop working! Stop working! Stop working! Oh my gosh. Who are those guys? Yeah. Seven, ten, eight, seven. Yes! I got the calculation! There is not much information on Archimedes' family other than his father, Phidias, being an astronomer. It is unknown whether he ever married or had children as no information credible could hold much proof. The Greek historian Plutarch wrote that Archimedes was in relation to Hiero II, the king of Syracuse, which is how he gained much fame during his lifetime because of his connection and his connection to Jello who was the son of King Hiero II. Archimedes as a young man through tales has studied in Alexandria with a mathematician who came after Euclid who was a Greek mathematician and the founder of geometry. Archimedes used much of his knowledge to make many inventions with much confidence especially for the war. Archimedes is described as a hero because of his courageous and smart qualities with his influence to the world and he was also a great friend as he helped King Hiero II with many critical problems in the city. Archimedes invented the sciences of mechanics and hydrostatistics. He discovered the laws of levers and pulleys, which he proved by using geometric reasoning through his studies from the Greek mathematician Euclid. Oh, I have to I have to make some quick calculations of the geometry really quick. It's a triangle, square, circle. Okay. Okay, then that geometry works if I convert that wooden stick into a pulley or a lever. What is, what is he doing? What? Is he doing? what? So according to my calculations, if I put the wooden stick here and put a param perimeter of a triangle, I could definitely move this for vehicle. Archimedes invented a fundamental concept of physics being the center of gravity. Archimedes' new principle he discovered is a law of physics which is fundamental to fluid inventions, including the hydrometer, which is used to determine the specific gravity, which is the relative density of liquid. This new principle is used in designing ships and submarines that are in the control of flight of a hot air balloon. Archimedes discovered the principle of flotation too, which is any floating body displaces its own weight of fluid. He also came up with the proof that water will adopt a spherical shape around the center of gravity. Discoveries credited to Archimedes include a block and trade pulley system that allows sailors to use the principle of leverage to lift objects, also with the invention of the autometer, an instrument for measuring the distance traveled by a vehicle. He has also been credited with improving the power and accuracy of a catapult along with another spectacular machine called the heat ray and the death ray which is used for protection against the Romans. King Hero the second sent me here. Where are the ships? Oh, it's right there. Archimedes also designed a huge ship known as Syracusia, which was built around 240 BC. After he built the Syracusia, he also designed another machine in order to remove bilges of water in the ocean. This was known as Archimedes' screw and was most used to raise water. 
Till this day, the Archimedes' screw is still in use for pumping liquids such as crystallized solids like coal and grain. As the Romans were attempting to attack Syracuse, Archimedes was given the task of defending the seaside city and created another machine which is now famous as the Claw of Archimedes. It consisted of a hook system to lift and topple ships which approached the walls of the city. Archimedes used this new method he made called Method of Exhaustion to prove his mathematical discoveries in which the statement can be proved in an indefinite number. Archimedes also made the first known use of indivisibles. His method of indivisibles was similar to the Calvieri's principle, which works only if two solids equal the same altitude. Archimedes is also considered the first to calculate an accurate estimation of the value of pi. He determined the value of pi, which is between 223 over 71. He became the first to derive a formula for the surface area and enclosed volume of a sphere. He also became the first to use the mathematical concept of infinity, along with his calculation of the value of the square root of 3, lying between approximately 1.7320261. This is the life of Blaise Pascal, 1623 to 1662. Oh, my stomach hurts. Oh, I get it. This is my stomach and no goes away just He had two sisters, Jacqueline, born in 1625, who was an infant prodigy in literacy circles, and Gilberete Pascal, born in 1625, who was very involved in service to the church and helped Blaise with his work on Christianity. He was the only son to Etienne and Antoinette Pascal. Pascal's father, Etienne Pascal, was a presiding judge of the tax court at Clermont Ferrand. After his mother died in 1626, the family then moved to Paris by the year of 1631. As Etienne Pascal was the children's teacher, he decided that Blaise was not ready to study mathematics before the age of 15. Blaise, though, with his curiosity on the other hand, started to work on geometry by himself at the age of 12. He discovered that the sum of the angles of a triangle are two right angles, and after Etienne witnessed Blaise being so interested and invested in math, he then lended him a copy of a lucid, which was the start of everything. In December 1639, the Pascal family left Paris to live in Rouen, where Etienne had gotten a job as a tax collector for Upper Normandy. Shortly after settling in Rouen, Blaise had his first work published. The Essay of Conic Sections, published in February 1640. Traits people described Blaise is a man with a loud voice with much manner. He was very precautious, a perfectionist, meek, and humble. In his life, he had always been in delicate health, suffering even in his youth from migraines, which carried on, grew older. His major jobs were being a physicist, a mathematician, and a published in the provincials. An interesting fact about Blaise is that he was very embarrassed about his talents of schoolwork. It is said that it even prevented his potential of discovering the infinitesimal calculus. Through his health problems, Blaise worked intensely on scientific and mathematical questions until October 1654. Around that date, he nearly lost his life in an accident. The horses pulling his carriage bolted, and the carriage was left hanging over a bridge above the river Seen. Although he was rescued without any physical injury, it does appear that he was much affected psychologically. Not long after, he underwent a religious experience on the 23rd of November 1654 to when he pledged his life to Christianity. During his religious period in his life, in 1658, Pascal started to think about mathematical problems again as he would lay awake at night unable to sleep from pain. He took little interest in science and spent his last years giving to the poor and going from church to another church in Paris, attending one religious service after another. But still, even after many years of service, 
Blaise was still obsessed with math, that in some of the provincials, the mysterious relations of human beings with God were treated as if they were a geometrical problem. Blaise's religious writings also became very rigorous because of his scientific and mathematical training. He established the foundation of the modern theory of probabilities, which became Pascal's principle of pressure, and promoted a religious doctrine that taught the experience of God through the heart. His principle of intuitionism had an impact later on philosophers such as Jean Jacques Rousseau and Henri Bergson and also the existentialists. He began to publish anonymous works on religious topics, 18 provincial letters being published during 1656 and early 1657. Pascal's most famous work in philosophy is Penesses, a collection of his personal thoughts and messages on human suffering and faith in God which began in 1656 and continued to work on during 1657 to 1658. This work contains Pascal Wager, which claims to prove that belief in God is rational. He wrote an essay on conic sections, Essay pour les coniques, based on his study of the now classical work of Gerard Descorges on synthetic projective geometry. Pascal made the first digital calculator operating by counting integers. This explained the youthful pride that appears in his dedication of the machine to the Chancellor of France. Pierre Seguriar, in 1654. According to my calculations, I should add this. Okay, a four. That's a 6.0 grams of magnesium. Okay. There you go. Okay. No way. Does this have the right integers? The dice problem, which we call in today's world roulette, was studied by Blaise. While the problem asks how to divide the stakes if a game of dice is incomplete, Pascal solved the problem for a two-player game but did not develop powerful enough mathematical methods to solve it for three or more players. Hmm. I mean, if I roll three more times, then I have to get 12. 12. 12. No way! 12. Hold on. Does that mean if I... Okay, let's roll it... Let's roll it four more times. So it's four. Okay, that's six. Okay, that is... Uh, that's nine. So this one would have to be 12 again. No way. According to my calculations, I figured out the dice problem. What's, what's going on? Ow, my stomach. Ow. Ow, not again. Oh, it's moving to my chest again. Ow. Oh, not my head. Ow, 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 ow. ow. He used Calvary's calculus of indivisibles to another problem of the area of any segment of the cycloid and the center of gravity. He solved the problems of the volume and surface area of a solid formed by rotating the cycloid along the x-axis. In the area of physics, Bliss contributed heavily in the studies of atmospheric pressure by discovering that vacuums are real and exist in the real world.